Trustee Perkins. Here. Trustee Rigby. Here. Trustee Schaller. Trustee Thompson. Here. President Richardson. Here, thank you. Would you all please place your hand over your hearts and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do better than we do just on the telephone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, okay, agenda item number four this evening is approval of the minutes from our meeting in December of 2020. Are there questions, edits, comments on the draft minutes for the clerk? There being none, Chair would like a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of the Board of Trustees from December 1st, 2020. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Lisa, did you get that? I didn't hear the second. Was that Trustee Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Please call the roll. Okay. Trustee Rigby? Aye. Trustee Thompson? Yes. Trustee Burke? Yes. Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. President Richardson? Yes. As is my custom, Chair will ask unanimous consent that the record remain open for a period of five business days for any necessary technical and conforming amendments to the minutes without objection, so ordered. Agenda item number five this evening, president's remarks. I'll, I'll go into this now, uh, just in the interest of time. Karen, would you share the screen so I can use it? Sure. Um, hang on. Go down to the share screen button. Yeah. I'm looking for you, like how do I share it with you? Just hit <laughs> share with everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, no. I've done this before with you and I don't see where I click to share. Down, down on the bottom, it says, uh, there should be a security button on yours next to yeah. participants. I've got share eyes at your screen sharing. I'm not seeing, it's just giving me my list of files to share. To, to, the, to the left of the participants button, do you, have a, do you have an icon at the bottom to the left of the one that says participants? Nope, hang on. Got it. Oh, there I get, that I can just hit you, right? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Every, you can open it for everybody. Uh, it, the icon I'm seeing is, is two over to the right of the participants icon. Well, I'm under pressure. I can't find it. <laughs> well, then we won't be talking about the signs. Uh, uh, I have I have the signs if you want me to share those. Yeah, that would be fine, Karen. OK, so I mean. Let me call it up on my computer and <clears throat> okay. There you go. You see it? Yep. Yes. Okay. I, I'll, I'll actually yield to Jim Thompson. I, I just set it up by saying that um, Jim's worked awfully hard on this. It's part of our omni-channel effort to support the restaurants uh, that is married to our direct mail effort uh, 
uh, that we did uh, in November and December, as well as the website and related things were, uh, we've worked on. This will be two kinds of signs and Jim can give all the details. I'm happy to yield to him. Uh, a couple of will be those taller ones that are anchored by actual posts in the ground. And then, um, a and then the others will be more the typical uh, campaign style signs. And, and so Jim, why don't you kind of look at, uh, show both of these and Karen, you may want to toggle between the two, open up both of them and then just toggle between back and forth. Let me get this. Yeah. That would be the larger one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is the larger one. Yeah. And so go, go ahead, Jim, and then talk about where you think you're gonna, uh, where you're thinking sure. of having them placed. Sure, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first thing I spoke with, uh, with Phil Claps at KC today regarding installation of these signs because of the weather. And he, uh, he confirmed to me that because of the, what he termed the beefy steel being used on these posts that they can be placed into the ground now, uh, probably in the early afternoon when it's the warmest. You, you could, if we have to, we could use like a mallet type hammer to do so. But he said they're, uh, they should be able to be placed in the ground, even though the weather is such as it is. So let me go through the list of the maps, the large signs. Um, we have a total of 10, um, seven signs, one at the Route 14, Angel Soft Water, one at All American, a reclaim close to the Pepper Road sign, two at Speedway Cafe one each on Route 14 and Kelsey Road entrances, and then one at Route 14 and Route 59, one at Route 22 at the hospital, and one at Route 22 at Stonehenge Golf, and then three backups to make 10 there. The smaller signs all on the personal property would be two at Marketplace, uh, one on each entrance, one at Kelsey Road house entrance, one at Wild Onion Pub, uh, Pepper Road entrance and two, uh, two, one each at Pepper Park Cafe and Wild Asparagus entrances. That's six with four backups, total of 10, there's a total of 20 in all. And that's what we propose to put up. And Jim, let me ask Jim Bateman to just uh, review for the board the proper liability. I, uh, excuse me, Mr. President, may I? I, I all want, want to finalize that by saying that. Uh, Thank you to uh, to Becky Bateman about about the the form that we would use to uh, go to the uh, owners of the properties. Uh, that was very nicely done. Thank you very much, Becky. So go ahead. Um, uh, yes, uh, Becky uh, uh, Bateman of our office did provide a a, a form authorizing uh, the granting of permission permission to the village of Lake Barrington for the placement of economic development signs on private property. Our village code sign regulations do require us to get written consent um, for, for such placement on private property. And so we have a form that can be used for that purpose. And um, I, I think as long as people are use, um, are fairly careful about putting them on private property, there, there really won't be any associated liability. You know, the key thing is obviously site distances and we, so at corner properties, we have to be careful, but, but um, I think with some thought and planning that should be able to be addressed. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any comment on the sign design before they- I would just like to note that um, Trustee Shower just joined us. Hey, John. He's in the middle of joining, so he's. Okay. Great. Terrific. Uh, does anybody have any final edits on these sign designs? I want to thank Jim Thompson for taking the lead on this. Thank you. They look great. Thank you. Well, you know, they, the, I have to tell you that the postcards uh, to me and, and to the the creative people that I, that I work with, they're, they're really outstandingly done. And, uh, and, the, and the way they've created these, uh, these campaign signs, 
uh, they very closely follow what the postcard is to to meld them together, which I think is an excellent uh, job on their part. Yeah, uh, you, Jim, you were seeking at the time, I recall, and I think you were successful in working with the uh, vendor on this, is to have the graphic appearance be consistent between uh, what was put in the mailbox versus what will be on the signs. And yes, yes. I like that idea. That that was good thinking. Thank you. Are there questions on, on this from any of the trustees for Mr. Bateman or Trustee Thompson? Okay, then uh, Jim, I think uh, you're you're good to go in, in having Karen place the order. Thank you. Now then my next question would be, who's going to install these signs? I installed, installed all of the uh, the other ones we did. <laughs> and uh, I sure would like a lot of help with these. And we have to be a little careful for social distancing about working together on this. Sure. Uh, it, it, may, it may well be that uh, we've got to think about that before we uh, start. Okay. The okay. And Trustee Thompson, I'll circle back. I, is it still the two large signs and then 20 of the small signs or what? No, it's, um, it's uh, 10 of each. 10 large and 10 small? Yes. It's on the, on, I sent Lisa and I copied you on my, uh, my report. On your report? And it's included on there. Okay. Did you, Lisa, did you get that report yet? I did, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Terrific. What are you drinking there, Chris? <laughs> Fresh pot. <laughs> okay. Uh, there being no further questions on that, uh, Jim, I think, uh, Karen, you're ready to to roll on on placing the order. Yep. Right. Terrific. I don't have anything else on president's remarks uh, right now, so we can move to agenda item six. This is the first opportunity in the agenda for the public to address the board on non-agenda items. Is there any member of the public in attendance who would seek recognition for that purpose? I don't see anybody on the screen. So uh, we can move to agenda item number seven, which is the consent agenda there are there are a number of event items on the consent agenda this evening uh, and karen i'll just ask you to please walk us through them one at a time and then call on either uh, the treasurer or the village attorney as needed sure uh, the first item is what we brought to you last month the employee health insurance um nothing's changed since then but because we had to um give uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield and uh, Better Business Planning, our numbers and everything prior to January 1st. Um, uh, we mentioned it last month and this is uh, ratifying that decision. Um, did you need me to go over all those numbers again or? Yeah, okay. The second item on the agenda is the animal control ordinance amendment. And basically what this does is uh, close a gap in our um, village code that prohibits the owner, um, typically of a dog, <clears throat> to, to uh, do their business on, on our property or somebody else's private property. Um, our code just had village right of way in it, so it did not include uh, like Friar Farm, Featherling, our village hall, or if a dog would go off of someone's yard and go into somebody else's yard. So this kind of just closes that gap um, Attorney Bateman, is there anything else that you want to add to that? It, it also uh, excludes from the private property not belonging to the owner. Well, it says that private property not belonging to the owner includes, but not as limited, to, but is not limited to homeowners association or condo association property. Good point. So the so um, you know. Uh, a subdivision with a HOA property or or LBF, LBS are both get the same intended protection of their private property from the ordinance. The pooper scooper law. They're calling it the doggy doo doo, but that sounds good too. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
So the next that is this apply only to dogs? No, it's it's animals under control. So trustee Burke's aardvark is covered by this. If his HOA allows aardvarks in his subdivision. Yes. It, it doesn't, but I was hoping it covers chickens when I walk my chicken. Yeah. Or how about anteaters? I like anteaters. What about the, what about deer, by the way? I think <laughs> it's a rule about the deer because they cause a problem in my yard. Yeah. They have to be under your control. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd like them to be under my control. Yeah. We had a deer eating out of my bird feeder today. Cost yeah. me five, five bucks for the bird seed. Right. <laughs> All right. Don't worry, we lose control, Karen. Why don't you move forward? Move forward. <laughs> so, um, item C on the consent agenda is the village board and plan commission regular meeting schedule. Uh, we talked about that last month, and this is to approve it. Um, item D is Featherling Park Professional Services Agreement. Um, last month, we decided to go forward with uh, Featherling Park. This is the uh, engineering contract for the uh, construction oversight with uh, HR Green. And they'll also be doing the um, erosion control inspections that are required by the state as well. Um, and that's an amount of $27,612. Um, items E and F are the Fidelity and Max Strategies extensions. If you recall earlier this year when COVID hit, um, we said, hey guys, we're not sure what's going to happen with our budget. We're not sure how much we're going to be using your services. So we cut back um, Fidelity to $1,000 a month from $3,000 and Max Strategies from $3 to $2. Um, and that extension actually went to December 31st. Um, so I've spoken to both of them and asked if they would be willing to extend their, uh, these rates until the end of April, which gives the board time to discuss this in the future and decide, um, you know, with our next budget year, if it's your wish to continue on with these uh, consultants or not. But for the time being, this extends this, uh, the same thing until April 30th. So uh, uh, nicely done, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think both firms stepped up, you know, uh, it's not a question, Karen, of whether we need or value their services. It was a question of purely budget at the time, given yeah. the dire forecast. It was never a question of utility or value add. And I want to be, I want to be clear about that uh, for the record. Uh, they both stepped up. They didn't, they didn't uh, hedge on the service levels uh, at all. And uh, they've been great partners. Uh, Ryan, I think spends a lot of time with us far more than I would have expected even when we started with him at the prior rate. And you know, what we learn uh, continuously and uh, I've seen this in other venues in my life. Uh, Fidelity is a great example of when you need them, you really need them. I.e. when IDOT wanted to close the Route 22 access to Good Shepherd Hospital. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think this is a fair way to continue and then we can evaluate it in the new budget year. Yeah in the spring. I was going to say, ironically, I think I've used Ryan more in the last several months than I have like in the two years prior. I mean, he's, he's we've just been using them a lot for things. So that's a, a, a very good point. Um, item G is the brand new updated watershed development ordinance from Lake County SMC. So hopefully you've all gone through those several hundred pages of <laughs> new ordinance. Um, the highlights of that is we, we're, we're a certified community. So we have Gowalt Hamilton as our village engineer. They're tasked with um, making sure when they do plan reviews and uh, site inspections that all of Lake County SMC's um, rules are being followed. And so that's what they do. Um, some of the probably the, the biggest changes to this WDO is uh, we talked about it uh, a couple of times probably about a year or so ago where the, the new rainfall data is showing that we're getting more rain in a shorter period of time. So I call them like flashy rains. So where a lot of people or a lot of organizations were concerned always with that 100 year flood, uh, which don't get me into how that's a wrong name for that. Um, is more about the flashier floods, the, the, the two inches and in two hours type of rain, the three inches and in a few hours type of rain. So they, they revised some of those numbers based on um, new rainfall data uh, from the feds and from the state. And um, uh, 
the, the, the detention volume has been adjusted accordingly. So basically you're storing more at the, at the lower level rains um, and kind of the same at the higher level rains. Um, they also have a provision which they're still working on and haven't figured it out. It's a money in lieu of detention for a certain portion of that rainfall event above the 50 year event. So for your, you know, 90% of your rains, it's not gonna make a difference. And if you have adequate downstream capacity, they're saying, okay, municipality, you can take a fee instead of um, having the developer provide that detention. Quite frankly, it probably doesn't make a lot of difference for Lake Barrington because we don't have that much new um, land for development, but when we do, it, it could have some impact on that. Um, so that's still in there. We're keeping that in because Lake County is still trying to figure out how that's all going to work. And by having it in now, um, we have the ability to, to use it in the future if we decide or we don't have to. So uh, there's that. And they wanted it back by, what was it, Jim, the middle of January or something when we're supposed to get it back? Yes, uh, I believe it's um, next okay. week. Yeah. It's, oh no, it's the 16th or 18th. Okay, so soon. So that's the that's that's the big thing with the WDO right now. So, um, any questions on any of these items? I have a question about Featherling Park. Sure. And when uh, would you anticipate that that work would begin and be completed? Um, we're hoping it begins like by the beginning of February, if mm -hmm. if um, weather allows us to begin, sure. um, and it would be done by. I'd say substantially complete by June 1st, because we have to have all our information and data into the state in July. Um, it might not be open to the public on June 1st, uh, Trustee Thompson, but that's when the, when the construction should be substantially complete. So you would anticipate to open to the public in July or August? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions for the administrator on the consent agenda? There being none, Chair would like a motion to approve and block agenda item 7A through G as stated in the recommended actions of the consent agenda. A, 2021 employee health insurance. B, animal control ordinance amendment. C, approval of village board and plan commission 2021 regular meeting schedule. D, Featherling Park professional services agreement. E, Fidelity Consulting Agreement Extension, F Max Strategies Consulting Agreement Extension, and G Watershed Development Ordinance Revisions. May I have a motion, please? So moved. By Trustee Mitchell. Thank you. May I please have a second? Second. And I'm sorry, who was second? Andy? Uh, Burke. Okay, thank you. Clerk will please call the roll. Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee Burke? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Rigby? Aye. Trustee Schaller? Sorry I'm late, but yes. <laughs> Trustee Thompson? Yes. President Richardson? Yes. And uh, John, we, we voted in your absence that when the pandemic's over, you get to buy the first round of drinks at Zaza's, so. Sounds good to me now that they have the fantastic enclosure outside. They finally removed the speed bumps in front of Zaza's. And uh, they do have flamethrowers inside their new addition. So uh, you're all welcome to stop by. You can stop by the Remax office on your way into town and, uh, and we'll buy you a drink over at Zaza's. Uh, sounds good. The um, <clears throat> uh, chair would like to move to agenda item number eight, the treasurer's report, Mrs. Hirsch. Thank you. Uh, tonight we have the financial statements for the seven months end in November 30th. So we are seven months into our fiscal 20. 21 year. Um, so let's look at the flash report on page two of the financials there that you've received in your packet. Revenue for the first seven months is $1,968,000. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to go to the, I'm, I'm going to go to the assets first. I'm sorry. I skipped the line. Uh, let's go back to the top of the financial of the flash report. This we have total assets of $2,998,000. We have current liabilities of $579,000, and we have equity at $2,420,000. Now we'll go down to our revenues, and you'll see we have revenues for the seven months of $1,968,000. We have total expenses of $1,394,000, and that gives us a net income of almost $574,000 for the seven months. 
So if we just go down below, as we've done before, we can look at our revenue from regular operations. You'll see there's $66,526 of what we call major road work that we pull out to come up with our regular operation at income and loss. Of that 11,681 is from November. Um, and that all relates to the 2020 road patching program. When we pull that out, you'll see we have regular operation net income of 640,000. And that's compared to this point last year of 504,000. So you can see, I mean, we've, um, we've really beat our projections that we had put in place earlier this year for, um, we kind of had the dire predictions for COVID. We're not through the year yet. We're just a little bit over half of the year. Um, you know, and as we expected, the categories that we expected to be down, those are down. Income tax is down. I'm excuse me, sales tax is down. License revenue is down. Interest income is down. Um, but surprisingly, income tax is way up from last year. Use tax and permit revenue, those are all way up. Um, those three combined, it's almost $140,000 collectively more than this point last year. Um, so that was, that's was that been kind of a surprise for me. Uh, we combined that with our extra $261,000 of real estate tax revenue, which we expected given the increased levy. And that's a pretty good boost to our net income uh, before we actually look at other income. Now, other income last year, if you're looking on page one of the flash, or the page two of the flash report, other revenues last year were $295,000 compared to our 25,000 this year. That really all relates to in, in, impact fees that were used and the Oslo grant money. So all those monies that came in were actually used. So they were really a net wash. So it's, those numbers aren't really that comparable anymore. Uh, I'll look at just a, a little talk about sales tax. I try to look at that each month because that's a big revenue line item for us. And we know it's really affected by COVID. Um, it's up this month, uh, about 46,500. And that's uh, last month, it was 37,000. So um, I just wanna say, well, that increase, it's about a 25% increase, that's huge. But when you break it down, it really comes down to five of our retailers, um, two of which are seasonal. Um, that's Tree Time, and then there's the children's clothing, I'm drawing a blank on what that's called. Uh, it's a resale that they do. Uh, a sense of style, growing sense of style. That's just a, a seasonal thing that's uh, once a year. Those came in last month. Um, one of our restaurants um, reported two months this month. So instead of recording last month and this month, it's two months worth of revenue this month. And so that explains, you know, three of the of the outliers. And then two rest, two of the retailers did have a, a better month than last month. So while it looks like it's really been this great increase, I'm not sure it's sustainable going forward. Um, if we keep our $37,000 sort of average going forward, we will um, we'll be slightly above budget for the year. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, the timing differences, you know, we, I've talked about this before, are, are about two months. And I believe J.B. Pritzker closed indoor dining November 4th. So we won't see the impact of that until our January financials. So it'll be interesting to see how that really does impact our restaurants, you know, in terms of what's going on there. I'm going to guess January, uh, November, and December used to be big months for our restaurants. And so that's unfortunate. Those months were closed to indoor dining. Um, so we'll, we'll see from there what's, you know, what's going to take place. Um, currently, sales tax is um, pretty close to budget. It's 59% actual to budget. Um, and for seven months of the year, that's, that's really quite good. So our total expenses, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, this is excluding road work, is down about $69,000 from last year at this point. Um, and these are decreases we knew about with decreases in mosquito abatement, consultants, road work, and then our donations. We did all drop those down because of COVID this year. Um, open spaces, expenses, and property maintenance are greater than expected increases that we have actually in the police services and the waste disposal and then the COVID-19. So while we had some um, areas that we did expect increases in expenses. We have others, others that offset that. So we're in good shape with our expense side of the budget as well, or the financials as well. Um, the balance sheet, I have reviewed all the cash accounts. Those are all in order. The bank statements have been reviewed um, and reconciled. We do that each month. Um, I will flip to page 11 and 12, unless there's a question. Or, Treasurer Hirsch. Sure. A question, the cannabis use tax, that's a pro rata share that Correct. comes to us for income because we still don't have a sales Absolutely. operation. Yeah that's, per cap yeah, that's per capita. Thank yeah. you. I didn't know if Andy was finally reporting that or what that he was doing. Right 
it, to my knowledge, we don't allow that in the village of Lake Barrington. So, um, and it's, I don't know, is it $300 a month or something? It's a small number. Um, yeah. But it, it, from what you read, you know, those are gangbusters in Illinois. The, the, what's going on with that revenue in the state is. Billion dollars. Billion dollars. Pretty impressive. <clears throat> yes. Incredible. It's a lot and of high smoke. people walking around out there. <laughs> Up in smoke. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of government dope. That is a lot of government yeah. dope. Okay, well, on that note, <laughs> well, let's turn to page 11 and 12. That's our budget to actual. Uh, you'll just see on page 11, our revenues are at 76% actual, actual to budget. So we're in good shape there. Some of that's timing. You know, we collect all our real estate taxes up front. I would like to report that we are just shy of collecting all our real estate taxes. I've been watching that given uh, the payment plans the county extended were about $45,000 short. Um, I believe residents have until, I think there's a date here, uh, January 22nd, 2021 to avoid a tax sale. So we still have um, a month or so, or I guess three weeks now, to hopefully collect that final $45,000. I'm not worried about it. Um, it's about 6% of our total. Um, I expect to collect it, but I just like to mention that because usually at this point in the year, we've collected all our real estate taxes. A question, perhaps for uh, village administrator: Do we still receive notification of properties that have gone into default or bank taken over? Um, you mean like when an individual house goes into foreclosure? Mm -hmm. uh, have we still we still get those, don't we, Lisa? We just haven't yeah. had them in a while. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any come across my desk. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I checked the uh, Lake County on foreclosures in Lake Barrington Shores uh, for the first three months of this year, and there are none. I, I get a um, a notice from the county when they they say they're going to actually sell the taxes. You know, sell with the taxes, and they have right. that. And that's how last year we discovered that the Tark Tarkowski property was going up for um, a sale for for not paying the taxes. And so I called um, Lake County Forest Preserve and said. Hey, look in the other <laughs> department. You can buy some property over here next to your forest preserve, and that's what they did. Yeah, you can you can check on the Lake County uh, Sheriff's Sale site. Yeah. And I've gone out for the next like three four months, and there is nothing in Lake Barrington at all. Good. That's good. I'm that glad. Good that. It's really good news. Okay, so page 12, you'll see, we'll look at our expenses and those, those are 54% actual budget. So we're just trending pretty much right on budget. Um, there's nothing on there that I really feel need mentioning, but once again, I'm happy to answer any questions on any of the revenue or the expense accounts before I move on to the next fund. Does anyone have any questions on the general fund? Good. Okay, so then on page, uh, excuse me, 13, You'll see we have the motor fuel tax fund. Uh, there's not much going on in there. Uh, 13 is the, um, excuse me, is the balance sheet and page 14 is the income statement. We have about $261,000 of net current assets of which $109,000 does, does apply to the Rebuild Illinois project. Uh, there's no more anticipated expenditures from that fund this year. So we'll just kind of watch the revenue coming in. It comes in about, you know, 15K a month between the uh, transportation renewal fund and the regular MFT. And then next year, we'll once again get the two payments for the rebuilt Illinois bonds. Next year, we get two of those a year, totaling $109,000. On page 18, we have the water sewer fund. We've got net current assets in there over a million five, about a million five hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars uh, there's no further expenditures expected in that fund um, the rest of the year. There's a few expenses on the warrants tonight to uh, pay for a few remaining bills, but nothing major expected from that fund uh, the rest of the year. So that's all I have on the funds before I go to the accounts payables. Anybody have any more questions on any of the, the funds? Okay, well, just a few things to mention on the, on the warrants. Um, they've all been reviewed. Um, Checks have been signed because we need to do that before the meeting since I'm not going to be in tomorrow, but we can always pull a check if it's if it's not approved tonight. Um, there's, there's a few invoices to highlight. Kane McKenna and Associates for $2,750 and that was for continued research for the 
potential Lake Barrington TIF. <laughs> Um, KC printing for $1,893, and that's for the December newsletter, which, um, Lisa, did that go out? Do you know, was that mailed or? It was mailed, okay. Um, and then there was a $10,000 check for time management. Now, this was related to the restaurant grant program that the board did approve or set up last month. Um, they met all of qualifications. Um, Trustee Rigby did um, okay a manual check between the last, the last meeting and this meeting. It is on tonight's warrants to let you know that that check was in fact made out and paid to them before this meeting since there was a time lag between the meetings. Um, uh, the Peggy, Peggy yes. just to interrupt for those who wouldn't know time management being the wild asparagus catering services. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, in the water sewer fund, Dixon Engineering, there's a request for $2,460, and that's the second payment for the inspection services on the interior water tower painting. And then um, 14,300 has been paid to date. If anyone looks really closely at the warrant, it says 41,300. There's a typo. I just wanted to alert you to that in case that question did come up. I noticed that after it was a little bit too late to change. And then, um, Mm -mm -mm, 13,400 for LC United and that's for the painting of the water tower. And that's the final payment. They were paid, it was their 10% um, retainers that was held from last month. And then on Warren B, there's just one item to point out and that's master service group for $6,962.19. And that was for mold remediation in Village Hall. We do intend to speak to the insurance company about that. I just have the um, invoices tonight to talk to them this week. And so that's all I have, but happy to answer any other questions that were um, on the warrants um, that you may have. Are there questions for the treasurer? Uh, this is Randy. I don't have a question, just a, a comment. Since about July or August, uh, every time uh, Peggy sends out a report to Andy and I on either sales tax or revenues, we, uh, we began to get amazed last summer that we were holding our own in, as mm -hmm. far as revenues go. And the comment is always, well, let's hope we can sustain it. Well, we've sustained it for six months now, and we seem to be doing all right. And Andy always comments as well. So he gets mm -hmm. the same sales tax reports. And so uh, let's keep your fingers crossed and uh, move on out. I probably shouldn't ask the question, but are the restaurants actually serving indoors? Are restaurants in Lake Barrington or no? I know, Z I know Zaza's is, and I know looking back that uh, Moss had indicated that I think June and July were the best months they ever had. Wow. Of course, that was when the tent was in the parking lot. But mm -hmm. now they've constructed that uh, enclosure in front of the main entrance. And I, th I think that's helped them. They tried to maintain alfresco dining as long as they could out front. I think that's helped them. But they are doing indoor dining. And uh, I don't know how big, but I, I allegedly they had... 125 reservations for New Year's Eve. Wow. Uh, additional comment on that. Um, the Kelsey Roadhouse is, they have enclosed their outdoor patio and they are utilizing that fully. Um, so it doesn't constitute indoor dining, but they do have, you know, if you would, on site dining in the enclosed area. Um, Pepper Park Coffee. Uh, no, they are to go service only. Just a comment about that. And I was going to talk about this in my report, but I might as well talk about it now. Um, that um, I've had a long conversation with Kristen uh, Imans, their manager, and she said it's really quite interesting. People have learned how to become pick up and carry out and drive through people. Um, and overall, she said their business is is holds on right around 75% of what it was when they were running a full operation. Um, and because of most of their loyal customers are still showing up to pick stuff up. Um, she said, if we were even allowed back to where we were under mitigations um, level two with some people indoors, they're almost at a hundred percent. She said, because their drive-through has picked up dramatically. Um, just, people are conditioned now to, to shop differently. Um, so she's saying, and this is part of the goal of our, of our whole program of, um, of the grant program, 
they've made an investment in a new point of purchase system that uh, modernizes the way they check people out. And it's now phone based, which means you can pay by phone, you can have loyalty cards, you can push messages out to people, you can push coupons out to people. She's very optimistic and they're using their grant money for that. Um, she's very optimistic that when things return to normal, that, that their business will be better than ever um, because they've actually built a drive-through clientele that they never used to have, strangely enough. So uh, there is some good news out there. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more, but since you were asking, uh, Onion Pub is not doing anything indoors and um, um, who am I forgetting? Um, I guess we've covered everybody. Um, and wild asparagus doesn't do, obviously, you know, they're not doing anything. A comment about wild asparagus, since we just paid her the $10,000, they've also updated their systems for delivery and carry out. Uh, they've, per they've invested quite a bit in, um, in to go pa food packaging for better packaging and that keeps food in better condition longer. Uh, and they've added delivery drivers. Uh, and, and a new point of sale that makes it more efficient for them to take orders and deliver. So the people are doing the right stuff with this money. Um, and um, so more on that subject, but since you asked, um, I'd say we are definitely holding our own and, and our restaurant owners are optimistic that, that you know, they got to weather the next few months and um, they're going to be okay. I know that wild asparagus uh, through the LBS uh, periodic uh, email system has really heavily promoted the fact that if you order, that since the owner lives in LBS, we'll deliver it by four o'clock. And I think that is, they have their menu on all the time and they've done, I think they've done a, a very nice job of offering that service. And apparently it's it's been taken advantage of periodically very well. Are there further questions then for the treasurer or comments concerning the financial statements? <clears throat> Excuse me, then chair would like a motion to approve and block agenda items 8A through C, A, approve the financial statements as of November 30, 2020. B, pay bills in the amount of $224,871.89 as listed on the accounts payable warrant A dated January 5, 2021, and C, pay bills in the amount of $42,997.73 as listed on the accounts payable warrant B, dated January 5, 2021. May I have a motion, please? So moved. I shall or may I have a second? Second. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Would you call the roll, please, Lisa? Sure. Trustee Schaller? Yes. Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee yes. Burke? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Rigby? Aye. Trustee Thompson? Yes. And President Richardson? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item number nine, the administrator's report. Sure. I just have a couple of things. One is I wanted to let you all know about the Barrington Area Volunteer Connection. It's a BABC. <clears throat> It's a new volunteer connection program um, that is being designed to connect people in the community who are looking to serve as volunteers with a nonprofit organization they might want to help out. And um, the uh, Barrington Area Development Council and the Barrington Area Library went together to create this. Um, I registered the Village of Lake Barrington um, on their website and um, Right now, because of COVID, we obviously can't have anybody inside volunteering if we had any indoor things like filing or something like that. But I, I did post up there for um, light uh, native gardening for our butterfly garden, just in case the Cub Scouts don't show up next spring. Um, <laughs> but they're gonna be rolling it out in the next Quintessential Barrington magazine. Um, Bob Lee, who many of you know, um, spearheaded a lot of this and I had many conversations with him and I think it's gonna be a good thing for the community. Um, so they, they'll advertise their website, which is if you want to get a sneak peek at it, it's uh, volunteer 
thebavc.org. Um, my other item was backyard hens, as you all saw in the newsletter that uh, was delivered last month. Um, that generated three additional responses. Uh, so we, we are up to a whopping 10 responses um, from all residents who have, who have um, sent me an email or a letter since we started this conversation a few months back. Um, and it's pretty much split down the middle, you know, five for, five against. And um, so I, I guess I'm getting to the point where it's kind of underwhelming response. And I'd like to get some direction at some point about do we move forward? Do we just leave things as it is? Um, I don't think a decision needs to be made tonight. I'd like to hear from Trustee Mitchell because I know this is one of the things that you had looked at. Um, I just need some direction on it. So that's it. If I, if I might jump in, thank you, uh, Administrator Dalton Lang. I think at this point, uh, with all the other things going on, we don't need to put another chicken and I mean, another iron in the fire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right now, I, I, I think we can let this ride. Um, we'll put them in freezer bags and put them away for right now, unless there are other, uh, other thoughts about trying to uh, move this forward right now. I think that's a good idea, Trustee Mitchell. Maybe we, we just let it sit in the freezer there until until a, a resident brings it up again. Sounds, it, it sounds great. good. Because I think just continuing to push when we're getting, I mean, we don't even have a dozen responses. So right. we don't have a dozen yet. So I, I think I think we can just let it, let it ride for now. Um, and I do, I, I want to thank particularly uh, Trustee Dalton Lang, who's been on the front line. Um, Trustee, doing, he's administrator now. I, I'm sorry, Administrator <laughs> Dalton Lang. I do that every time, I'm sorry. Administrator Dalton Lang, uh, who's been the, uh, who's keeping the foxes out here, keeping us going, going forward. Um, and I, I do appreciate that very much. Uh, I have had no replies, no calls, about this at all, so. Well, we've got a lot of good information. We've got a draft ordinance. We, we did a lot of research. So well, I'll keep that all on file here so that if the trustees, whenever wish to revisit it, we, we've got a lot of that data available. And I, and I would suggest that we, I don't think table is quite the correct word because, you know, I, I think if we if we just sort of let it sit for right now, we'll, we'll send it to, uh, the Committee on Rules and Procedures. How about that? <laughs> it's just like in litigation. We're going to have a motion to continue. Motion to continue. <laughs> so moved. Second. Thank I'm you. sure in the spring it will probably come back up. You know, probably will. Spring. nobody wants to be out there feeding those chickens in this cold weather. <laughs> uh -uh. No, it will. It will. It will probably hatch in the spring. You're right. You're okay. right. No pun intended. God. Yeah. Oh. Don't worry. I'll be playing here all night. Be sure and have the chicken. <laughs> oh, golly. Uh, further questions for the administrator? Okay, then we can move to agenda item 10, the clerk's report. Thank you. Village Hall will be closed on Monday, January 18th in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And regarding Christmas tree pickup, that will be on Wednesday, January 20th. Administrator Dalton Lang was curious as to where the trees went after they were picked up and found out that they go to a compost facility. Um, and details are on the calendar page and as well as the garbage and recycling page of our website, if anyone has any questions. That's it. Questions for the uh, clerk. Okay, we can move to the reports of the standing committees. Uh, I don't really, I, I covered what I wanted to into the president's remarks, so I will take mine off the list because I kind of have done that. I am going to attend the U.S. Conference of Mayors, which is going to be virtual uh, this year. Uh, it's usually the end of January. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they manage it, uh, but, you know, uh, time zone differences and so forth. But I think they're breaking it into smaller segments and part of the warrants tonight were the annual dues 
uh, for my membership there or Lake Barrington's membership there. Uh, let me move to uh, 11A, COVID-19 Response Task Force, Trustee Burke. Uh, thank you, President Richardson. I'll cover that and I'll cover economic development all in one because it all kind of runs together. Um, most are aware the, the entire state of Illinois remains in tier three mitigation, which means we're above the, the threshold of 8% running. Um, in fact, um, we've, we've, been, we've remained there for a while. We've come down a bit and we're, we're creeping back up, specifically in region nine, which is, includes uh, Lake County uh, and McHenry County. We're at 9.8% seven day running average of positivity. Um, that's down from where we started um, when I reported last month at 12.6, which is great news, but it's starting to creep back up again. Uh, so we were hopeful that we might get to the 8% threshold and as region and actually um, maybe soften and even move into tier um, two mitigation. Although I've heard the governor make a statement that says even if a region um, were to qualify for <laughs> tier two mitigation, he's not enthusiastic right now about moving to tier two because he's not optimistic that we're going to maintain that, particularly on the heels of the holiday travel and everything. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but we're starting to see some uptick there um, anyway. Uh, but certainly that would be nice in region nine. McHenry leads us quite a bit on positivity. Lake is actually quite a bit lower uh, than is um, McHenry, um, but hopefully as that starts to come down, if it starts to come down, then we actually could move to tier two mitigation, which means some indoor dining uh, would be allowed. Um, most of you are well aware the vaccination is rolling out, albeit we also are very aware that not uh, at the rate that most would like to see. Um, and um, I want to remind everybody, and I'm sorry, uh, Trustee Mitchell, if I'm stealing any of your piece here, but um, that Lake County has the all vax portal up and running now for vaccination registration. Um, so encouraging everybody here and everybody at home and we should get this word out probably through our website um, and maybe make a link and I'll talk to Lisa about it um, because it's how you register in Lake County. So you put your information in and then what they do is they push that back to you and they will notify you when it's your turn if you will. So good idea to get yourself on the list and get yourself registered um, for that. I'll leave, uh, and that's the lakecountyillinois.gov website will lead you to the AllVax um, portal where you can put your information in. Um, I believe there's a call, is it tomorrow, um, Karen, yes. that, and, and, and um, Chris, that is going to go into more detail, and I think we'll have better detail about the rollout and vaccination and some of the questions. Um, we're in 1A rollout right now, which is healthcare personnel and, um, and the long-term care facility residents. That's where we are for now in 1A, um, but this is going to explain more about the rollout and the process and how it gets to each and every one of us eventually on the list. Um, moving into economic development, we spoke already a little bit about revenue and it's thrilling to see that we're doing as well as we are. Um, and, uh, you know, I want you to know that I have personally met with and talked to all five restaurant owners, uh, over the last couple of months, encouraging them to apply for our grant money, um, hearing their stories about what they're doing to stay afloat. Um, they're very committed to staying in business. Uh, and I want you all to know because of your actions as a board, um, th these folks are seeing these grants as, um, and your leadership, Kevin, as life-saving. And, and they've literally said, you know, um, we probably were not gonna be able to continue this business without this support. Um, some needed it quote, more than others, but we're, we're blind to that. We are helping everybody who needs help. Um, and we've got one, and that was the wild asparagus catering their first pig to the trough, as I like to say. And um, they've already got their application in, approved, and they've gotten paid, which you all just approved tonight, their $10,000 check. And uh, 
Karen will tell you she was over the moon. She said, this means everything to me and my business. So uh, she wanted us to thank every one of you um, for that support. So that's a happy story and y'all should feel pretty good about that. Um, everybody else is working on their submissions. They have all told us what they are going to, they have cleared with us what they want to submit. Um, so we are now waiting for the rest of the applications to be officially submitted. So the great news is all five of our restaurants intend to um, take advantage of the grant program as fully as they possibly can. Did you have a question, Kevin? Yeah, I, Andy, I, uh, uh, I wanna first thank you for what has been a remarkable amount of work, mm -hmm. great leadership on these things uh, over these many months. Uh, I'd like to, at some point, invite these restaurant owners maybe into next month's call. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't mind encouraging them to, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to share that with us in writing so that we can share it with the press. I think it's really important for our taxpayers to know that when we make initiatives like this happen, that it's not, it's not for naught, but rather it's, it has a meaningful impact that really will affect things that, uh, that touch people every day. And so I, I'd love to invite one or all of them onto a future Zoom meeting with us, uh, simply to talk about what this experience has meant for them. Yeah, I'd be happy to initiate that and see who would be interested. I'm pretty confident I know a few who would be willing to do that. So, uh, um, so and then no right doubt, no doubt, we can follow up with that. Yeah. Um, you already mentioned. I think Trustee Schaller also already mentioned um, Zaza's new uh, temporary enclosure. Um, initially, we were under the impression that may be a one-time deal, but under further discussion. It sure, it sure sounds like it may be something that they're going to put up and take down as the seasons come. So um, to, to just allow them uh, even post COVID pandemic, just to give them that much more seating potentially outside. So they're not certain yet how that's gonna work, but um, we've worked very, very closely. And I wanna thank um, in particular, Karen and Julia um, for managing through uh, the construction and permitting process and inspection process. It's been, there's been some challenges over there, but we've gotten through it. Um, everybody seems pretty happy with the way that it's turned out. So um, they are uh, up and running. So thanks to Karen, Julia, and staff who supported that. Um, I want to I want to echo that, Andy. I, I, I obviously the the department did an awful lot to assist in making that all happen, and I. I think there were a certain number of hurdles that everyone had to uh, to jump through to make it happen. And uh, I, our gratitude to obviously Karen and, and our department for assisting them. I, it, it, it took a while, but uh, it seems like everyone's happy with the way it's gone. But I, I wanna thank everyone for their participation in making, and I think Moss does too and his, his father. Well, I appreciate that, John. There have been some challenges, but I think uh, our mantra here has to be that we have to meet people more than halfway and we have to show immense flexibility uh, in a time where we're in desperate times, right? So it's desperate measures. Um, but we also remind people that our number one responsibility is public health and safety. Yeah. And we will never ever compromise anything yeah. with any project uh, that puts public health and safety at risk. And as long as those criteria are being met, then we can show flexibility in some of the other things uh, that it takes and give people time to get it done and get it done right. So uh, I agreed. And uh, it's been a great process, a good learning process. And, you know, the silver lining in a lot of this, I would say, is getting to know our business owners that much better and being coming much more intimate and much more invested in their success is a really positive thing that I would say will sustain us when we come out of this, we're gonna be better for it, so. And what it appears they're appreciative of those efforts too. Yes, no doubt. Uh, a couple other quick things. Um, it was interesting, we were talking about real estate and, and all that and John, why, you know, uh, while you're right there talking, it's interesting because this is anecdotal, but in my neighborhood, three homes have sold in like the last six weeks 
that have, and and they've all are you know prices are clearly moving back up for these types of homes on these types of property it had been number of years of declining property values but the latest sales in our neighborhood have shown really strong um, and listings that are only staying on the market for 30 to 45 days and houses around here used to sit on the market for six months and then not fetch asking price the last house that just sold up the street from me was sold in 10 days and sold above asking price so um, there's a little bit of a frenzy going on here with these types of properties, and that's a positive thing. I'll tag on to that and indicate to you that last year in Lake Barrington Shores, there were 78 closings on the MLS. This year, there were 102, maybe plus four of for sale by owners, mm. 106. The average sale price was up 6.7%. And, uh, and the inventory now is one of the lowest I can recall in the 17, 18 years that I've been doing this. Uh, there are only 17 on the market right now. So inventory is low as spring comes. We anticipate that will jump up, but it's uh, 2020 despite everything has been a, has been a, a pretty decent year. And, uh, and we're looking forward. Matter of fact, I will have a closing tomorrow of a unit that went under contract this year for $521,000. So for LBS, that's not too bad. I'll, I'll add on it. Susie and I have a neighbor here in Kelsey Farms. Andy, very much the same circumstance. Had had his house on the market at a lower price. It didn't move, it didn't move. He took it off the market. He put it back on, it sold I think in two or three days, way above the prior price. Uh, look, I, we made a judgment back in April as a board looking at the trends that the exodus from Chicago would benefit communities like us and that our efforts to differentiate Lake Barrington because we have publicly accessible open space that other communities don't have is absolutely right. This is no longer anecdotal data in my mind. We, we spotted a trend and it's been, I think, pretty well validated. What it tells me and my night wouldn't be complete in one of these things if I didn't turn a little bit of Karen and Peggy's hair even a bit grayer uh, by saying, well, I think we need to spend more money to advertise so that when those young couples leave Chicago to come out here, they know we're a better place than lots of the communities around us. And we've made that effort with Ryan, we've made some progress, but I think the trends are arguing for a doubling down on that strategy. And uh, it, it because I, I found the, the data here to be pretty compelling in talking to people over the holidays about, gee, my neighbor's house sold pretty quickly. Just on the uh, other side of that, Kevin, and you'll probably be interested, and Attorney Bateman might too, I know the property which is just north of uh, the Kelsey Roadhouse, mm -hmm. which at one time was on the market for over a million dollars. If you want five acres of that plus a home that should be dilapidated, it's coming back on the market for 150,000. Is that the Robertson property, John? The one yeah. immediately north? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> uh, the, the house is the problem. The problem. Oh, you'd, you'd have to tear it down. Yeah, the, the property's beautiful. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, the, the Mrs. Scott's property, it's worked out beautifully uh, for, for the community because they've maintained the character of, of the property. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would like to say one thing about that, if I may, please. And that is that um, a while ago, a friend of mine and I made a presentation to the LBS HOA about working with realtors outside of the local market to drive uh, Chicago people into Lake Barrington. And uh, it's something I, I believe I'd like to share with you at some point here we had that may be a value to us in uh, you know in getting at more people uh, to move out into Lake Barrington and also I think it's also important that that um, what we're doing with these restaurants is something that's not only valuable for the restaurants and, and the village but it's also valuable for us uh, using max strategies to make sure that at some point here in the near future, we do some sort of a story about what we've done with these restaurants, Absolutely. how they've been able to 
be successful in this type of a market? I think it's a great, it could even be a great, a great uh, uh, mail piece or, or advertising. Yes. yes, absolutely. Earned media and paid media. Yeah, I think to put a pin in this conversation, I would say that, you know, I've already reached out to Trustee Schaller for some help on the realtor side. Um, but admittedly, with everything else that's going on, haven't had a much chance to follow up with him. So I think somehow um, between Trustee Schaller working the real estate side um, and with you, Jim, uh, working on sort of the marketing and messaging communication side, will and avoiding Open Act Meetings Act issues, <laughs> you know, you and I work together, John and I work together, sure. but our goal is this marketing effort, right? So yes. um, I, we're gonna we're gonna revive that. I think that we can feel a bit bolstered by the fact that our budget here with retail sales tax is holding its own and we're doing well. You know, we, we wanted to be cautious. We didn't wanna go out guns blazing, but I think we can feel a little more bullish about this, uh, Kevin. So it might curl some hair, but the reality of it is uh, the same people who watch the dollars and cents are also, you know, are also uh, bolstered by the fact that they see things uh, right now ticking in the right direction. So uh, we'll revisit this um, and 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 put this back at the top of the list, particularly now that I'm through a heavy surge of push with the restaurants. Uh, I agree, Jim. We need to get good press out of this. Um, and uh, it certainly sends a message to the business community that uh, we're open for business and we're not just looking for, we're not just about bringing new businesses here, but we're about helping our current businesses thrive. Uh, and it's a great message. So more to come on that. Related to that note, our good friend, uh, uh, Daniel Weimer, I attended his uh, ribbon cutting, a very socially distanced ribbon cutting over at DB Menswear. Uh, in December, um, and that was sponsored by the Barrington Area Chamber of Commerce. They do a great job. They did a press release. It got quite a bit of uh, pickup on social media, and he's got some good coverage there. Um, Mac Strategies is now going to release our, um, our press release about welcoming this new business to Lake Barrington, so that's just been completed. Um, so there'll be some hopefully positive press coming out of that. Um, and DB's sign has been delayed because of some COVID related issues by the sign manufacturer. He was hoping to have it up, but um, the sign that you all approved supporting him on uh, should be up um, hopefully um, by the end of January if the sign company gets back on track. So that's his goal. I'm happy to report that he said he did better for the holiday being so new, uh, he had a better holiday season than he anticipated that he was going to have. So from his standpoint, he's tickled pink because he had very low expectations being so new, um, but he said he actually did quite well. So he was pretty yeah. uh, pretty excited about that. So, you know, congratulations to all of, all of you for um, supporting these efforts with our local businesses. And I think it bodes well for where we're going. I know I need to wrap this up, the clock is ticking. The very last thing related to all this is, um, last time we talked about um, we talked about the work that was being done, consulting work by Kane McKenna on looking at eligibility requirements for creating a TIF district in the Route 14 Pepper Road corridor area. Uh, last month, Karen and I talked about how um, they, um, they completed their study and, oh, look at that, Karen, aren't you <laughs> clever? As if we had practiced this somehow. <laughs> um, Karen, since you've got that up there, I mean, do you, do you wanna speak to the study result? Do you want me to speak to the study result? Um, I'll just kick it off. Um, Go ahead. Okay, so Kane McKenna, we, we outlined um, some properties uh, that you see on the map here that could potentially be eligible for a TIF. And if you recall, when Trustee Burke started uh, this endeavor, uh, Kay McKenna said, we're going to look at it in two parts. The first part will be once we define what could be a potential TIF area, then to see if it meets um, a number of the, the 
criteria, if you will, uh, to make it eligible for a TIP. There's certain criteria for that. So this area is basically along Northwest Highway um, that you see here uh, going from um, where the uh, mower works is. This is where DB is, the DB is, the uh, Peterson Plaza. It has a mix of some vacant properties, um, Kelsey's Roadhouse, uh, some vacant properties. And this corner here with um, um, All American Reclaim and Angel and the ice rink and so forth. So, um, Trustee Bird, do you want to go from there about how, how we met some of the requirements and it's time to do the next? Yeah, so, so long and short of it, we received their report and in their report, at the, and thank you very much, Karen, for that. And in their report, um, they, they have indicated that there are 13 qualifying factors that are available to a, a municipality for TIF districting. Uh, minimum number to qualify you is three of the 13 criteria have to be met. And they were happy to tell us that we meet five of the 13 criteria. That's what their preliminary study shows. So the area that we have chosen um, meets, the, uh, meets the criteria and therefore we could proceed with tis, TIF districting of this area if we chose to do so. So what do we do with that? Um, two things. Um, we have their final report that we were just massaging and, and just got it done not too long ago. So Karen has committed to getting that out to all the trustees over the next week or so, um, certainly well in advance of the next meeting. So you will all get a chance to read their report um, that you all uh, approved and helped pay for. Um, the next step in that is we've asked them to update a proposal for phase two of the consulting piece which would then begin to dimensionalize sort of what the financial implications may be. In other words, the next step in this is, so what if we did the TIF district uh, and beginning to look at how that might pay out um, and what would have to happen. So that gets much more into the dollars and cents side, which is really where the rubber meets the road. So um, we are intending to, for next month's meeting to have this um, written um, report from them to you. And then we will have a proposal from them about phase two of this that we will ask you to review and we will ask you to support or not, depending on what we uh, decide uh, to support going forward with that if we think that's the right thing to do. So that's what you can expect next in this process. Um, so, so we, so we, we would have that, re, that would, we would be talking about that at the next meeting, the report and, and going into stage two. Yes. So you will have the report, their initial report that we've just received, Jim, and you'll get that say, you know, next week, then you'll have plenty of time to review that. We can talk about any questions people have about that at the next meeting. And I'm also, Karen and I are available anytime if people want to reach out and ask questions, but also we would hope to have a revised presentation from them that, I mean, a revised proposal for phase two, because they couldn't really clearly tell us about phase two until we passed phase one. So they gave us a rough idea about what phase two looks like, but now that they know us better and they understand the area that we're looking at, they can fine tune the proposal and say, okay, Here's what we propose we do next. This is the next step in the process for okay. us. And uh, it's not a giant step. It's another, you know, smaller step. Um, it's not the big step yet. So it's not asking for tens of thousands of dollars. It's more like thousands of dollars. And that will probably be the jumping off point. I think what we'll have to decide is, do we want to learn a little bit more about the economic impact of this and make sure that it makes sense on when you put you know, pen to paper, and then initiate that, get that final report, and then I think you're at decision time. Then I think you're deciding whether or not you're moving forward and planning to go forward. And it's a very complex and it's a long process, but um, we're thrilled to be starting it now because the timing couldn't be any better. Sure. Um, and uh, so much more to come on this. Again, want to thank Karen. She's done most of the heavy lifting on this. And uh, I'm just the eye candy that she brings along for the meetings. Um, eye candy? Necessary. <laughs> Wait, Jim, you think that's funny? 
Oh, excuse me, trustee. Don't, don't, don't worry, Jim. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> so, I, have a, I have a question, though. Um, the numbers, are, are those numbers a ranking of where? No, those numbers, uh, the, the GIS program that we have, I mm -hmm. have no control over those numbers. So okay. that's just the, um, when you in, encompass like an area, it assigns yeah. numbers to the parcels. Okay, so there's no ranking involved. No, no, no that's just how they identify them and okay. then, yeah. right? right. Yeah, it's a part of the report. So they'll say like property one, property two, blah, okay. blah, blah. And you'll, so you'll see all that. It will list every property and it will tell you what it is and it'll give you all the information on that piece of property. Okay. So, so um, where, would, where would our initial emphasis on a TIF area be? Everything that you see that is labeled one through 16. Yeah. So what that would do, and it'll explain in the report that you'll be getting is once a TIF is established, it just takes that incremental increase in value um, over a potential of 23 years that goes into a pot per se. So um, as, as developments come in and, the, and um, the, the value of the properties go up, or even if it's just because of inflation or time or whatever, um, then those monies can be used to um, in developer agreements um, for a, a facade program per se, or if you had some improvements, for example, a, 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 a traffic signal, for example, if there's a traffic signal needed um, over off of Hillview, that TIF monies could be used for things like that. Okay. So the original, the original emphasis on a TIF district would be everything from one to 16. Yeah, that area. Yeah. You have if to you draw, right. Yeah. If you draw a line around all of that, that would be considered the TIF district. And there was a lot of discussion about that. It has to be contiguous and and why we chose what we chose, but um, by choosing those properties, if you will, that also guarantee that that uh, um, that strengthened our our um, position as qualifying for five of, of out of thirteen, you know, okay. qualifications, yeah. right? So yeah. um, those property and and the other thing is it's a in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's a relatively small. Yeah. TIF district and um but that's by design this is the first time we've ever waded sure. into this and we don't want to get out over too far over our skis here um we want to you know we we want to take one that we think has a high probability of succeeding and one that would be easier to manage than something that's massive so um there's a lot of thought that's gone into this and a lot of help again kind of very, very good at what they do. Um, so more to come on this, uh, much, much more to come on this, but we wanted you to know where we were in the process and what you could expect okay. to see next. Great. Let, uh, let me ask another question. So I'm familiar with TIF districts as TIF districts, but that's about it. So let me ask this. Uh, regarding what I would call the renewal of any of those areas, uh, do the businesses that are Adjacent to any of those areas, have any um, um, influence on what would go in there? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Do you mean th those who are not in the TIF district? Right. No, no, no. I'm saying in the TIF district, uh, let's say the one by All American Reclaim there, you know, Pepper Road and Northwest Highway. Would the businesses that are already there have any? influenced over the types of businesses that we would like to see there? Um, I would say no, the, 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 the short answer is no. Okay. However, however, um, like everything that we do, remember we also have, you know, we have a, a, um, a total plan or our master plan that, right. that remember what we've always said about our development efforts that they need to be needed amenities for the and they need to be complementary to existing businesses so right. would we be, would we want to bring starbucks and put them next to pepper park coffee probably not. not right, right. um do we want to build another gas station right next to the one we have probably not so so uh, in a way they do have a say because they know that what we're doing is looking out for their interest while at the same right. time looking out for the interest of the village. Does that make sense? Yes, yes thank you. 
Um, so that's it. That is way overdue for me to be done with my portion of this. So uh, thanks for putting up with me. Yeah, and, I want to go home. You know. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> I, I want to go home too. You are home. <laughs> and that, and that, uh, President Richardson, that concludes my um, lengthy report. That's uh, no thank. Thank you very much. Um, you know, as Trustee Burke has stepped up and taken on a lot more of the responsibilities. Uh, do you notice how I'm getting less long-winded and he's getting long, more long? I don't know. I'm turning into you. My wife even said that the other day. <laughs> yeah. I think good. he's challenging me for my, my title uh, of long-winded, never stops talking. And I, I'm impressed with his, his effort. That's because Notre Dame and Clemson both lost. Oh, yeah. And, and <laughs> Indiana I did, lost. I did not say I did not say anything. That's right. I pulled That's cool. You guys pulled. knock it off. That's just not fair. <laughs> that must have been a pretty rough night, actually, in the Richardson house, I have to say. <laughs> well, and then, and then the next day, Indiana lost, and Charlotte's boyfriend is an alum there. So, And then the Bears lost. So... Uh, yeah. You know, it was a lousy football weekend. The, <laughs> no, speak for yourself. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're oh, lucky. Oh, oh. You're lucky. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Burke. We can yeah. move to agenda item 11C, Community Relations, Special yeah. Events and Veterans Affairs, Trustee Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's see, um, all right. Uh, let's, oh, yes. Uh, first thing is uh, on community relations, we'd like to consider including in all 2021 resident mailings, a reminder of our great open spaces and the opportunities residents have to enjoy them. Uh, and we'd like to include all that. Uh, also include information on where the bicycles would uh, are allowed. You know, th this goes back to our, you know, our, our uh, research we did and you were speaking about today, uh, President Richardson about open spaces. I think it's very important that we continue to, uh, to make, the, you know, to just, the, the right word isn't hammer, but just to continue to emphasize the open spaces availabilities we have. Yeah, and Jim, let me ask you a question on that. Uh, if, if you'd be willing to talk to Ryan McLaughlin or to Julie and Karen, I don't know if you should be involved in that or not, but we probably ought to look at search engine optimization. Yes. By, for us, yes. uh, so that when, folks start looking at alternatives to the density of traditional urban setting, and they're looking for something with lower density and more green space, that we have SEO positioning. Right, excellent idea. Good, thank you. Um, and I, earlier I had asked about the feathering, sorry. <laughs> That's my wife, you know, I'm... <laughs> Anyway, um, feathering. So um, what I, I asked uh, uh, Administrator Karen Dalton Lang about it being fitting. Oh, there she is on the other line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, anyway, because we need to uh, prepare not just an announcement, but some sort of a, of a, a earned media uh, uh, and capitalization of what that's all about and why it's important to increasing the open spaces in the community. So uh, I'll be working with Ryan on that as well. Okay. And then. Um... <laughs> hey, I got some advice for you. Just pick it up and answer. I'm going to pick it up. Hold on. You may want to put yourself on mute. Hey, Jenny, listen, I'll call you right back. We're on the. <laughs> on the board meeting, okay? Thanks. Yeah, she wants Love to me. know where you are tonight. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> You're in trouble. You're... <laughs> oh, dear. Um, okay, uh, now to e-news. Our subscribers are up from 264 to 269. Mm. Woo! Yeah, smoking. Up. Killing it, Jim. <laughs> so, you need to, I'm asking if everyone on this on this Zoom call, can make sure that you remember to remind all the village residents that you know and speak to to sign up for the for the e news. Okay, because we want to get this going as as greatly as we can. We keep uh, putting it into the uh, the LBS notes, etc. 
And uh, we'll just have to work. I'll just have to work on that some more. I'm really not very happy with how that's going. Uh, Veterans Affairs. The 2021 plans include uh, Bravehearts demonstration again at Friar Farm, dependent, of course, on the COVID-19 issue. And I've spoken to uh, Senator McConkey regarding that expo we had talked about, and they are still very much in favor of doing it, again, based upon the COVID-19. So uh, we'll just be hanging on to the two of those. So both of those uh, people would like to do to uh, to do that. So we'll just have to see where we're going. Uh, the veterans participate in the annual Daughters of the American Revolution Veterans Replay Ceremony at Evergreen Cemetery. And uh, for those uh, village residents who knew retired U.S. Marine Al Winchester, one of the veterans of the LBS founders, he passed away last weekend. Uh, yeah, Al was a tremendous veteran supporter and he'll be greatly missed. And uh, let's see, that's uh, that's about it for me, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, are there questions for Trustee Thompson? Then we can move to agenda item 11F, Finance, Human Resources, and Administration. Trustee Rigby. Thank you very much, uh, uh, President Richardson. Um, we finally got our check, uh, one of our checks from um, Lake County into the CARES Act reimbursement program for $32,687. That's for the first and second submission. We still have a third submission they haven't covered yet. That's uh, $4,423. And so we look forward to receiving uh, that, which will bring our total to somewhere over $37,000 that we will get reimbursed. Hey, Randy, uh, can I ask you a question, please? Sure. Um, I probably don't have an answer, but- No, I know I'll you make, will have the I'll answer. Make and, up. and maybe it's a silly question, but- <clears throat> um, how did those, how did that reimbursement figure into our budget process or where did that figure into our budget process? This goes in, uh, Peggy will tell you, I think uh, it just goes into our revenues. Yeah, we, it was, we did not anticipate that in our budget, Andy. So, I mean, is this all plus to the budget? Well, it is, but we also didn't anticipate most of those COVID nineteen expenses as well. No, no it just covers it covers part part of the expenses, Andy. Mm -hmm. So it that goes back into our general revenues. Right, but I guess so. I guess in other words, maybe what I mean by that is when we revised the budget post COVID, right? Didn't we go back and make budget revisions? We did. And what I'm saying is, how did we handle this? Did we anticipate added spending to be to be then in effect offset by these repayments? Did we just anticipate added spending but didn't anticipate reimbursement? It, it does, am I making sense what I'm asking? Yeah, the, we did not anticipate any reimbursement. That nothing was guaranteed. So there's no revenue in the budget. Karen, I don't think we actually anticipated the expenses either, did we? Can you help not, me on that one? A lot of the expenses. So yeah. The, yeah, so a lot of the expenses we had incurred like cleaning the village hall, um, the uh, glass at the front window, you know, that sort of thing. We, we weren't aware of that at the time. Okay, so, I got it. So, so, so it's really a net it's a, wash, basically. It's a, it's a wash. Okay, that's, yeah. yeah. thank you. You Sorry. thought you had money there, didn't you? <laughs> hey, I'm always like, looking no, for no. money. We can put up more signs. Right, more signs. <laughs> Sorry, Randy, keep going. That, uh, that, uh, that's about it, some good news. Uh, uh, Debbie's uh, husband, Pete, is uh, recovered. He's back home and uh, she's keeping an eye on him and she's, uh, she'll be back in the office next week, right, Karen? Yeah. Okay, good. She's recovered too. Good news. Yeah, it's yes. really good news, yeah. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Questions for Trustee Rigby? We can move to agenda item 11G, open spaces and village facilities. Trustee Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Karen, would it be possible if I could share screen? I don't know if you can give me privilege. Um, I was having trouble with that earlier. Okay, um, looks yeah. like it's disabled, but I it, I can put them up or I can just talk about them either way. Oh, oh, isn't that cute? Oh. Wait a minute. Now we're gonna. Now we're gonna. We're going for rabbits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Got rid of the chickens and we're going for rabbits. Exactly. I like it. All right, let's see. I like a rabbit. Yeah. Stew. Oh, 
Ouch. All right. Let's see if we can get this to work here. All right. Okay. It may or may not. Can you all see that? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. Let's not waste. We won't waste any more time. We will. We'll do this uh, another time that way. So, um, go back to where I was here and see. Come on. Now it's. I'm seeing nothing here. Come on. Where's my meeting? There we are. There you are. Okay. So a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, one is I do very much appreciate uh, Trustee Thompson focusing on, you know, promoting the open space and the use of that. And I think particularly during this COVID time, um, aside from weather that might uh, get so cold and, and chilling that it's not comfortable, but being able to walk and be able to use the trails has just been paramount to people in the village. Uh, traffic's picked up, and it's been a, it's been a wonderful, right. wonderful occasion. Really, uh, very, very important. Um, in terms of COVID, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Uh, as Trustee Burke mentioned, I will definitely want to point out a few things there. And in terms of what I wanted to hit on first is vaccines, which you've heard quite a bit about these days. And right now, about 17 million vaccines have been shipped to the states. And unfortunately, only about 4.8 million have been administered. This is, as Trustee Burke said, in phase 1A, which is hitting the healthcare workers and the frontline people. Um, our hub and spoke system of shipping it out and then trying to get it out to all the places uh, is not the most effective. Vaccine campaigns that have been around before um, have not had the pressure of the disease outbreak all around it. And so there's, there's complications that the people you're trying to vaccinate are taking care of the people and they can't instantly, somebody uh, you know looked at this and said, why can't you just give, go to a hospital and vaccinate 100% of the people that day because of the fallout uh, and the potential adverse reactions to the vaccine, typically a fever, uh, some aches or chills, and that then you end up with not having people to cover shifts and things can get even worse. So that's, that's the big thing. So vaccines are coming. Please make sure that you do go to the AllVax portal for Lake County and make sure that you've filled that out and gotten yourself in there. And even if you aren't, if you don't hit any of the categories, it doesn't really matter. It gets you in the system and then it can simplify it. Um, we're not sure ultimately whether people will get notified from their healthcare providers, their, uh, you know, whatever list they're on, but you need to be on the list. So that's very important. Second thing that- uh, Hey, Chris, I have a question for you that you may not know this. It's, it's early in the process, but people have asked me this question, which is particularly when you start signing up through the portal, how, does, how will someone know what category, who's putting you in the various 1A, B, C, 2s? You know, there's age requirements, there's other things, but there's also medical requirements. Like how does all that go into a big pot and how does somebody know that it's Andy Burke's time based upon his age, his health? You know what I'm saying? Like yes. who's controlling a, that? There is an algorithm that's built into these systems depending upon, and this is part of the difficulty, each state, county by county in some cases are doing this with their own system. It's the AllVax portal here. In other places, it is through the, well, Jim, you need to fix your camera angle. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mr. Bateman. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so no, I'm depends, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the system that they are using. In some states where they've done, where they have a high percentage of people with electronic medical records, EMR, the EPIC system, or some of these things that you communicate now with your doctor, that will be a reach out, an outreach tool. But with the AllVax portal, they will be able to take that algorithm, all that data is put in there, 
And you can tell as you go through this, if you fill it out, uh, you know, you think, oh, I'm at risk. Well, have you had an organ transplant? Are you in this category? You can sort of see where you're going to fall. Um, so that does that does that help? Yeah, but how does but is that somehow being verified through healthcare systems? In other words, if someone goes online and says, "I'm a, I have type I have diabetes," are we taking people at face value, or does that need to be? You need your doctor's note to say I have diabetes. Right now, there is no outside verification unless it's coming through uh, Epic, which is the major hospital data system that hospitals right. use for your records or to communicate. You can go in, <clears throat> Advocate Aurora, for example, you can go in and check your vaccines. So they would have that information in there. Got but it. if it's not, if it's through an all vax portal where it's completely provided by you, that right now there's no verification for that system at all. Got it, so it interesting, it, okay. Well, it's one of the challenges of trying to keep up with that. All right, thank you. Um, the other thing that you've heard about is the new strain that the vaccine has mutated, or the, the virus has mutated, and there is a new strain. Um, it's good news, bad news. The 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 bad news is all viruses mutate. That's how they grow and continue to come, whether it's a flu virus or some other virus in your throat, your nasal passages. They all do that and replicate and keep going. The, the good news is that this strain is not more deadly, right. but it is more infectious, more contagious. Um, so there are even uh, all sorts of theories that the virus viruses learn, they, they can know how to do this. And so there may be some uh, postulation out there right now among scientists and researchers that the virus is learning that social distancing is making it harder to connect. And so the virus will start to replicate and be able to stay in the air longer, go further and connect with people's nasal passages or their, their mouths when they least expect it. So uh, take it all with a grain of salt right now. Don't don't panic. It is going to come across the country. It's it started in one state, three states, and it's continuing to go. Um, right now, England and Great Britain is that is the largest thing that's taking over, uh, and it will continue to move. So don't panic. Just get you know wear your mask. That's the most important thing. <clears throat> the final thing that I want to focus on for information here related to this is some statistics and I, and I always try to stay away from giving you too many numbers and things, but a couple of numbers in particular, nationally, you know that we are, we're approaching 280,000 deaths. Um, in Illinois, we are approaching almost 17,000 deaths. And in Lake County, that number drops down to 829. The important thing with this statement, with this data, is that if we look at the long-term care facilities, for example, bring it all the way down to Lake County, they have had 3,946 cases resulting in 450 deaths. Now, you'll remember I just said that Lake County had 829 deaths. 54.3% of our deaths in our county have been from long-term care facilities. As a state, we are at 49% of the deaths in Illinois. 8,297 deaths that if you look at the long-term care, that number is 40, it's over 4,000. So you end up it's really scary. So the, the takeaway from all of this is that the most important group to think about is the next group in line for the vaccines, the people in long-term care facilities. So as the virus continues to spread, mutates, new strains, it will continue to infect people. But the most important thing is to wear the mask and to stay away from older relatives uh, grandparents, anybody who else may have other problems, and anybody who may be sort of 
in their late 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, because these people will continue to die from the virus, whether it's more transmissible, it's more dangerous or whatever, because of the comorbidities and the problems. So the big takeaway is, uh, as our numbers, it appears to get better, maybe, oh, we, you know, there's only this many this day and this and it goes down. Expect a spike uh, as we just had from Thanksgiving. The numbers were down, they went up, they went up, they went up. And after Thanksgiving, a few weeks later, we had a spike. Christmas, it started to go down. And then as Christmas into the new year, sometime later this month, um, if I were a betting man, I would say we're going to have a significant spike of new cases and subsequently more deaths. So please, please wear the mask and stay safe. Yeah. Questions? Are there questions for Trustee Mitchell? You know, Chris, I, I, I've been working on some of this for one of my clients and a lot, you've reiterated, I think a lot of the key points. Uh, I, I saw something last night. I, I tend to do our grocery shopping uh, about 930 at night when the crowds at, at the grocery store are, are lighter. And there were two guys, I would guess in their 50s, not uh, uh, just happened to, uh, I don't think they were had any relation to each other, but both of them were in the store without masks. And I was just flabbergasted. I hadn't seen that before. It's been great <clears throat> compliance with it. And uh, I, I think there's been a lot of progress on this. I saw some polling data that said that's been one of the biggest shifts of public opinion on COVID-19 is the willingness of the public to embrace the mask as a public health you know, measure. Uh, but there are some blockheads. And yes, I know I am on the record. And I know that this is being recorded. So let me repeat, there are some blockheads who don't want to wear the mask. You know, the law requires all of us to wear clothes when we go to the grocery store. I don't know why in the world they think it's such a big imposition to wear the mask. I end a tirade, but I, I think you're right. If you look at kind of the trend lines, and this goes to your uh, point a couple of months ago, it was going to be a wavy experience because of the holidays. Mm-hmm. But every day gets us a few more minutes of sunlight and a few more days and a few more vials of vaccine, uh, you know, around this. Um, yes. I, I appreciate what you're doing on this. It's great information for our community. Thank you. Uh, we can move to agenda item 11H, public safety and gated communities. Trustee Schaller. Thank you, President Richardson. Uh, you know, speaking of uh, incidents, and I don't know how many, but let's say in the month of November, there were 17 ambulance calls to Lake Barrington Woods Yeah, that the Lake County Sheriff's Department reported. I don't know how many of them, or if any of them, were COVID-related, but I, but I know that both Wakanda's ambulance runs into this area and the Barrington Countryside ambulance runs into this area are remarkably higher than they are for the rest of the area. So as I, as I echo what uh, President Richardson said, uh, safety, be safe, uh, be healthy, wear the mask. And I, I know I was in a store today too, and there were a couple of people on behalf of the store right at the entrance that as people walked in and if somebody might not have had that said, wear the mask and oh, okay, well, it's all right. Not a lot, but still, I mean, it's, uh, I think our stores are taking responsibility for <clears throat> reacting positively as well. So yeah. uh, as far as likewise from the November uh, Sheriff's Department report, which uh, Administrator Dalton Lang also gets, there were 39 separate calls to Lake Barrington Shores. So I meant you talk about being our local police department. They certainly have a number of incidents and they have a number of uh, runs to throughout the entire community. And so I appreciate what they do in our behalf. Of interest, the chief deputy who has been one of our main liaisons to uh, the village, uh, Chief Deputy Chris Thompson 
has opted to retire. He will retire the end of this oh, month. Wow. Oh, he's only 50 years old, but he's been with the department for 25 years. He's and, a great uh, guy. If you're in law enforcement these days, I, I sympathize with anyone in law enforcement. And he is, uh, from a family issue, personal issue, determined uh, maybe it's time to take my retirement and, and move on. So it's, uh, he's been a good friend of Lake County with uh, <clears throat> Lang. We don't know who his replacement is. He has mentioned uh, uh, Lieutenant Scott Couric might be. Uh, Couric right now is kind of our liaison. So that to be determined exactly what happens. But uh, we rely a lot upon the Lake County Sheriff's Department for our police department. I'm an advocate of what they do. And uh, we sin sincerely hope that moving forward, we get the same type of activity and, and response and coverage that we have experienced in the yeah. past. So uh, speaking of the Sheriff's Department, identity theft has been one of the main calls in the last couple of months that they have had. And if you've gotten some social security threats and all that, they've encouraged you to go on a state uh, website and register. Uh, I, in fact, was one of them that got a couple letters on unemployment, which I haven't been on, but they said they didn't give you any benefits. And I said, oh, not it. But I did register and haven't heard anything since. I know a couple of the residents in Lake Barrington Shores have been duped in identity theft, have lost uh, upwards of $3,000 in, uh, in some gift cards and things like that. So I I simply encourage all of our residents, not necessarily when you get that phone call, to be as vulnerable as we all want to be when it comes to seeking and giving out information about anything that we have, because that's where a lot of it is, is taking place. Uh, you know, uh, John, we, we have a client that provides identity theft protection and recovery services. and. Um, Right now, because of the pan <clears throat> pandemic that there's a, in the US an identity stolen every 3.5 seconds, literally. It's just incredible. It is. And with, uh, with the stimulus checks, I understand already yeah. there are people that are going online yeah. and kind of getting into uh, the stimulus check situation too. So yeah. simply a caution, Beware, don't let any information out on the internet. Certainly don't respond with any credit cards, any personal, any bank information. Uh, if you do get a call like that, call your bank specifically. Uh, don't, don't convey it via whoever is calling mm -hmm. you at that point in time. Um, Plus there's a, new, excuse me, there's a new one now called synthetic identity theft where they get one piece of information about you. And over the course of maybe a year, 18 months, they begin to put together just, uh, you know, basically an identity based upon that one piece of information. And once they have that and they put everything together with that, then they, they go after you basically. And they use that identity you know, to do whatever they want to do with it. Yeah. So be cautious is the bottom line more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, Wakanda Fire District has been doing Zoom meetings um, and, the, and the Barrington Countryside now has been doing their Zoom meetings. I do attend on a regular basis uh, their board meetings. Uh, Wakanda purchased a new ambulance. They sold a new ambulance. You'll be interested. The interested parties in old ambulances, uh, <laughs> it's not only a government auction, but there are a lot of... Um, home improvement people that are buying old ambulances. And you've probably seen a lot of floating around look like ambulances, but they are retrofitting. Um, the fire departments take out most of the equipment that are necessary, but it's interesting that that's where a lot of them are going these days. Uh, Darrington Countryside Fire Protection District, uh, Jim Cryer is involved with the, uh, the State uh, Fire Chiefs Association, but they've also been doing a self-evaluation of their strategy, which is kind of interesting. They went with a consultant. Uh, are we doing everything we should as a board or as a department? 
And while I would say that I think both of our departments do an excellent job in what they are doing, it's interesting that they are getting an interesting self-evaluation of some of their firefighters about communications and about operations, and they're only doing it to get better. And I applaud them for going through that process. As I said, I think they do a great job, but it's interesting that they are expending the money to just make sure that they are the best that they possibly can become. And one other final thing with regards to them, they did get approval to construct a, a move ahead with a third fire station at 100 South Huff Street. Uh, that's right across from the Advocate Good Shepherd uh, Wellness Center on Barrington Road, just, just south of town. So I know they had gone to Cook County for a variance and allowing them to build a station next to Prairie Middle School. That didn't happen, but they apparently will now move ahead with constructing a third fire station uh, just south of Barrington to serve that part of the district, which is Inverness and some parts of Palatine and, and I think the north part of Barrington Hill. So uh, we're again fortunate, I think, that we have good fire departments with mutual aid that serve both of our the entire district and Lake County Sheriff's Department that takes care of all of us from a police department standpoint. And speaking because of a department like Wakanda where they are full-time firefighters and pension, it's a good move from the village of Lake Barrington to have both of those service us without having the responsibility of the ongoing pension thing, which is a, an issue from the state to school boards, to everything else. Um, as far as tall grass, I've not heard anything more from tall grass. I think obviously we go into the new year. Uh, maybe uh, Administrator Colton Lang, if there have been any new permits or I haven't think, I think everything there is moving along as well as it possibly can. I think there's two or three in the hopper right now. Yeah. So, so I, and they're moving forward. They've done some sales and they're looking forward to a, a good year in 2021 as well. I know a couple of people have come into our office that are looking at the area and I've suggested that they explore the tall grass from a new construction. The prices of those homes have gone down dramatically from Taylor Morrison to MI and yet they're still building a, a nice home on a, on a good lot. So uh, obviously everything we can do to promote development of tall grass. Enclave is pretty well developed, but tall grass, if we can do that, uh, would be to our advantage. And as far as LBS, um, there have been a couple, I'm not aware of an awful lot of COVID instances in LBS. I do know a couple of people down the block that were self-quarantined for a while, had some. I don't think it's dramatic. And then we also have a new contract for public safety, which will begin February 1st. Uh, that will be in-house with First Service. I can't say personally that I'm in favor of that, but that's what the Master Board has determined. And they have retained a individual who would be a, a chief of the department, which I think is a, a good move too. But the place is in, basically LBS is in lockdown. The activity center is still closed but we all social distance. And when we have decent weather, everyone's out walking dogs or out walking. It's the neat thing about LBS, you can still walk around the area and enjoy open space, an oasis of countryside living right here in our village. That's the end of my report. Yeah. But clean up after your dog. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you had a dog, Jim. <laughs> Oh my, thank you, John. Uh, questions for Trustee Schaller. Then we can move to 11I, uh, Roads and Infrastructure, Trustee Perkins. Thank you, President Richardson. First off, Trustee Mitchell, um, I just have to tell you, you your uh, comments are, they're breaking my optimism of a January 19th in-person learning <laughs> date. Yeah, oh, that's okay. Um, the Sorry. only... What's that? Sorry about the, that. The truth. The truth is, yeah. Hey, we will. We'll. We'll, you know, we're having it. We had a good, a good uh, break, and we're having a good time. So it's, you know, just as, as soon as we get the full in person down, you know, 
it, we're going to go back or, or the, the home down, we're going to go back. So, okay. um, uh, I just have one thing. Um, last month, uh, Flint Creek and Barrington Harbor neighborhoods um, had some potholes, um, cold patch. The Cuba Township applied a uh, cold patch um, just before it got cold and started snowing and icing. So it was good timing on their part. Um, and that is all. Questions for Trustee Perkins? Thank you. Uh, agenda item 12, old business, DB sign, 50% reimbursement. Uh, Andy or Karen, anything you'd like to say beyond what's already been discussed? No, this is just in line for once the sign goes up and he submits the proper paperwork, we can, we can issue the check. So if it happens between now and the next month, so. Okay. Then chair would like a motion to authorize the village administrator to issue a check in an amount not to exceed $1,881.25 or 50% of the sign and installation cost, whichever is less after supporting documentation is received. May I have that motion, please? So moved. By Second. Mitchell, seconded by Thompson. Thank you. Uh, clerk will please call the roll. Christy Mitchell. Yes. Christy Thompson. Yes. Christy Burke. Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Rigby? Aye. Trustee Schaller? Yes. President Richardson? Yes. There is no, there are no ordinances under 13 or resolutions under 14. We do need a closed session tonight for purposes of matters related to personnel. Uh, Mr. Bateman, do you wanna remind us of how the technology is gonna work now? Because this is the public meeting that we're on now and do we all leave this one, go to the next one, and then log back into this one? Oh, you're on mute, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> you need to unmute. You need to unmute, Jim. There we go. Yeah. So yes, that's correct. Uh, that's the plan. Is that we we uh, we all leave this one, um, <laughs> uh, sign up to the Zoom site that uh, that was in the email that we sent earlier um today and uh, then um i think i we, we sent it to some some of you and then, and then uh, uh karen and then you will we'll stay go. live on this one though to keep it this line open for us yes, to come I will. yeah and then once you're out um i'll start admitting you back in right you might want to text me in case i'm doing something so i <laughs> <laughs> okay by the way, I, I love those hipster glasses you got. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> those are, those are I, my, my daughter Charlotte would love those. Like all things, you get them on the internet and they've got the, the coding for the screens and stuff and the reading glasses basically. Got your blue lenses there. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. Okay, then Cher, Cher would like a motion that a portion of the meeting be closed effective immediately for purposes of discussing matters of village personnel specifically employee performance and compensation. May I have that motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, did you get that, Lisa? I did not. So moved, Schaller. Schaller. Second, second Thompson. Thank you. And please call the roll. Okay. Trustee Schaller? Yes. Trustee Thompson? Yes. Trustee Burke? Yes. Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Rigby? Aye. President Richardson. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we're going to all log off except for Karen. And I guess Lisa, Peggy, you don't need to stay for anything. In yeah, I'm going to say good night. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Bye, Peggy. Thank and you. Then, Lisa, you don't come into this either, right, Jim? It's just you. Correct. Okay. So Lisa and Karen will stay on this, on this line. Yeah. And we'll come yeah, back. I can do the roll call for adjournment. That's no big deal. So. Okay. So Lisa, you can sign out too. Thanks. We're up, then I'm gonna we're gonna sign off and log into the new one. Okay. Thank you.
Hey, Lisa, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so I got on our website and I cannot find tonight's agenda on our website. Hmm, that's strange. Well, because I got an email about it from a resident um, and I went to look for it and I'm like, I can't find it either. So okay. I, went, I went to agendas and minutes uh -huh. and I clicked on the village board box, you know, that has a picture of the welcome to village of Lake Barrington. Yeah, I'm going to try and go to it and still stay connected. Okay. So it was there and it should also be on the... Um, calendar page so it should be on both let's see all right i can check the calendar page so board of trustees meeting oops i went on the wrong one february yeah it's not on the calendar page either where is today's date it's not even on here oh i'm on february 2nd i'm on the wrong date yeah me too Our, today's date is not showing up the next date is january 20th but I'm seeing the entire calendar and I clicked January 5th. Oh, here it is. No, it did. Okay. So now it did. I'm, I'm on Tuesday, January 5th. It's on, it's on the calendar, but go to, um, go to home and then press the agendas and minutes button. You know, that light blue. Yeah. Yeah. That's so strange that, but I, I guess they take away today's date if it's today, which is really strange because then people can't get to it. So, okay, let's see, village board. I know I put it on. I don't know why it's not showing up. Yeah. Um, oh, how strange. There's no current agendas found. Right. Because I had to create a 2021. Right. So, I don't yeah, know. I, okay. I don't know what happened. Well, when you get back from vacation, just put on your list to look at. Yes. Yeah, I remember doing it because I remember thinking on both of them, I thought, well, I don't want to put on um, the notifications for both because then people will get notifications for both. So I was like, well, I think the people who sign up for our meetings for the agenda would want to know more than just the calendar date, you know, that we have something on our calendar. So I remember putting notifications on for this one for the agenda. So yeah. I remember doing it specifically. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. So I mean, well, it's it's I there it. under the under the calendar. You can get. Let me click on agenda. Let me make sure she came up with the right agenda. Right. Yeah. The problem is, is it's not even showing up. Like when you just click on Lake Barrington and it shows news and announcements, then meetings and events. Like today is not even showing up anymore. Like today's over. You I have know. To I know. So that's strange. Right. So that it's, you had yeah. two things to think about. Like what what happened and, and with um, the, the program. Yeah. And, and why yes. that is coming off. So I'm going to yeah. try and put it on right now again. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll do it now. <laughs> okay, And then you can log off and I will um, after you're done and go pack. Um, okay, are you sure I could? Yeah, yeah. Cause I'll, just, I'll just call the roll for the ordinance. And um, and then for the adjournment, I think they all just say yes for the adjournment. Um, yeah, and then you don't call it after that. Are you sure? I mean, yeah, I no, that's fine, Lisa. That's fine. And you know, we'll probably, right. you're probably, well, at not, you're going to be gone until next Tuesday. So yeah. let's talk Monday or something. I think you should probably just plan on not coming in on Tuesday, just working from home since it's like your day after you're getting home from vacation. Yeah. Um, and, and with all the COVID stuff. So just to yeah. make sure no one's feeling sick or something and we'll just play it by ear. Like I was thinking okay. about your, your thoughts, you know, like staying home for that week, but okay, we, we can figure it out. Or if you want to come in early and get whatever you need, you know, um, mm -hmm. and then leave before we get here. Cause I don't get here before eight. <laughs> so. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm just looking and I see the agenda is here. It's just not showing up where it should be. So, because I see it here in like documents. So oh. I did put it on. It's just not showing up for whatever reason. There, so agendas and minutes. Yeah. I don't know why it's not. Yeah. So I'll keep working on it and get it there because it needs to be there. Yeah. So, but at least we know if someone searched the documents and the the calendar, it's there. It's just not where it should be. Uh, okay. <laughs> What are documents? I never even looked there. What's oh document center? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, it's under all the documents. Um, okay. Oh. Least, yeah, that's where it's showing up under agendas. When I look at it um, under agendas and minutes and documents, it shows all of them. And I see the one here that I put. So hmm. what would I look under? I'm under document center. Here. Well, I'm looking at it from the administrator point. Oh, so okay. Right. Yeah, but, but you should the document center. It's just, it's the old thing of, of like administration, applications, building and zoning. But it should still be there, forms and documents. And then they have the different titles. So it's probably under administration. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else it would be under. Yeah. You don't see it. Yeah, I don't know where it was. Anyway, it's not important. That's nobody would find it this way. But I, you know, under documents for the for the public side of this. Um so the calendar and the agenda thing is so okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna work on it because I want it on there. Yeah. You know, where did it go? Yeah. I'll figure it out and then I'll, you know, I can always send a an email to Lou. Okay. That needs to be on there. Yeah. I won't tell him I'm on vacation again. <laughs> I'll be like, oh no, is Karen going to contact me? <laughs> Enjoy your vacation. Thank you. I'll get this figured out and then I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Follow up with me Karen. I, I, we can talk next week. So, all right, okay. go pack. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I gotta sign off from the Zoom meeting. You can't pull it back up. So you should like, if you hover near the bottom, on the right hand side, it'll be a red button that says end. But I, I'm trying to pull it back up. Like I'm clicking on the little zoom icon in the bottom because it, it went away. Oh, I just hover and, and that like a screen, uh, a bar at the bottom comes up. Oh, because I see a little tiny thumbnail of your face. Okay. With some options that says hide video, mute my audio. Oh, stop video, maybe stop video. video. No, that's just stopping your picture from, you should have something that says like end. It doesn't. Then the other, it says exit minimized video. Maybe yeah. that'll exit out. I'm going to yeah. try it. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, still here. Okay. Well, at least it pulled it back. Now I can click on leave because I see leave. Okay. Leave is Okay. Good. I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Share screen and
Well, this has worked pretty smoothly. <laughs> yes, indeed. This worked pretty smoothly. While you were out, I figured out how to do the remote control. <laughs> I'm scared screen. It's the remote control, and I have to give it up. So, what, what do you mean, remote control? <laughs> what she, kind of remote control? She's it's, taking over our screens. Yeah, I can share screens. It's the remote control that staff and government have over all elected officials. Oh, got it. Yeah, okay, I get it. But I'm bump. <laughs> We're still missing. Not everybody made it back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But right now, the two Republican Senate candidates in Georgia are clinging to a 2.5149 oh. lead each, oh. uh, with 86% of the oh. vote in. Do you know where the so, Do you know where the vote's from? Where it's coming? I would. Uh, there is a map, and uh, of the state, and it looks like uh, there's one county that is still counting. Is it South South Georgia? No, it's up north in one of the Republican districts. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Uh, so, uh, it. Uh, I think now they're just. Um, I don't know if this will survive. You know, Georgia has an automatic recount yeah. law. Yeah. So I don't know if this will oh. survive that or, or not. 
Well, the losers are going to want to recount anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think if by statute, if it's within a certain, um, if it's within a certain uh, range, yeah. there's an automatic recount. Yeah. So I think one. It's just Trustee Mitchell. Yes, I think so. I'll call the roll um, for the uh, for returning to open session. Okay. Um. Uh. Let me see. Uh, Trustee Thompson. I'm here. I'm here. I knew you were. Uh, <laughs> tr Trustee Perkins. Here. Trustee Schaller. Here. Trustee Burke. Here. President Richardson. Here. And Trustee Mitchell. No Trustee Mitchell. All right. And no Trustee Rigby. And no Trustee Rigby either. Got to give them yeah. a second to weigh in here. I, since they're doing that, I'm going to get a drink of water. I'll be right back. And I promise yes, it's really water. Okay, here comes Trusty Ray. <laughs> ah, yes. Next time I'll, I'll set the little doorbell ring. <laughs> I, as well, a recording well. secretary, I recognize that Trusty Rigby has joined um, the, the meeting and um, he can answer aye to the roll call. Aye. Thank you. Are we waiting for anybody else? Let's see. Mitchell. We're waiting for Mitchell. His dial up yeah. is not oh. dialing up. <laughs> Mitchell, Mitchell and I were on all by ourselves. <laughs> and so I just went closed everything out and I'm on my iPad now. So I don't know what's going on on my computer. <laughs> I think Thompson screwed it up. Well, he of might course. be out there waiting in the wrong room. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but we were both, look, we did it twice. He came on, I came on, we talked a little bit, we hung up, we did it again, we were talking to each other again. So I don't hmm. know where that, what happened. Oh dear. Well, we'll give him another minute. That might be Maine. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Well, he might. Karen, have. Karen, take over his computer and get him on. Hey, don't let him in. Don't let him in. <laughs> Maybe uh, someone should text him. You're on the wrong meeting. <laughs> He's in the closed session. <laughs> but that's just it. A lot of times his cell phone does not work there. Yeah. Is Are you texting him, Karen? In, uh, New England. Texting him. Uh, oh, that's right, Karen. I forgot he had cell reception problems at yeah, he, house, he, our house in Maine. Yeah. That's why he gives us the le the landline for. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, he should be able to call in, right? Yeah. You have a call yeah. in number. Right, there's that's a right. call in number on the agenda. Just a question, oh, Attorney Bateman, you mentioned that this was a February vote. Is that a different vote than what? No, we're no doing? this this is the the the, the ordinance uh, for the staff uh, compensation for the staff bonuses is on the agenda now. Okay. And, and then the February votes about Karen. Oh, yes, okay. Correct. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, in in the interest of time, uh, I want to be fair to everybody else. Uh, you know, we all have uh, those of us who were in closed session uh, are informed by Trustee Mitchell's views, and uh, I think we have unanimous consensus on this. In any event, uh, Chair would like a motion to reopen the public Don't session. Move. Second, Thompson. 
Yeah, and then Mr. Bateman, you sure. call the roll for that. Um, uh, Trustee Thompson? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Rigby? Aye. Trustee Schaller? Yes. Trustee Burke? Yes. President, Rich President Richardson? <clears throat> yes, thank you. Uh, pursuant to uh, uh, prior con uh, the, the prior discussion in closed session, Chair would now like a motion to approve Ordinance number 2021-0-23, compensation of appointed officers and employees as presented. May I have that motion, please? Um, second. Okay, Perkins and Thompson. Uh, a, qu a question, is already 2021 Ordinance 23? Seems a little early. That's a great question, John. I don't know if it should be 01 or not. I'll, I'll let the clerk make that uh, uh, that's an, decision. It was probably supposed to be 01. Yeah. Chair asks unanimous consent that the staff be given authority to make the necessary conforming amendment without objection so ordered. Thank you, Trustee uh, Schaller. Good catch, John. Thank you. Uh, moved by Perkins, second by Thompson. Uh, clerk will please call the roll. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's well, me. I'll do that. Um, <laughs> tr Trustee Burke? Yes. Trustee Schaller? Yes. Trustee Thompson? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Rigby? Aye. President Richardson? Uh, yes. And I just for purposes of the record, since Trustee Mitchell's having connectivity problems, he did indicate uh, his willingness to vote affirmatively and support the recommendation set forth in the ordinance as well, just for purposes of the record. Agenda item 17, this is the second opportunity in the agenda for the public to address the board. Is there any member of the public seeking recognition? Chair seeing none, there is no other business. So chair would like oh, a motion oh, to adjourn. <laughs> Thompson. Moved by, moved by Scheller, second by Thompson. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are Thank adjourned, ladies and gentlemen. President Thank you much. Richardson, your your White nice House, you your White House ornament arrived. I, yes. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah, they were backed up this year. I mailed them the Thursday before Christmas, so eight days before Christmas. Yeah. I, th I thought maybe and people are just now President, getting. It. I thought maybe with President Kennedy, maybe you might give up a year, but because I'm horrible. No, at he's an Irish Catholic. <laughs> he's an Irish yeah, Catholic. Guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Did he go to Notre Dame? Too? No, unfortunately, he went to the land of the heathen, Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Thank you. Before you all Thanks, know, guys. Who's second amendment for the record? I didn't get that. What? Who first what? and who seconded for the adjournment? Oh, uh, Th uh, Thompson. Thompson, I think. Yeah. Schaller, Schaller and Thompson. Yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Good evening. Okay, everybody. thanks, guys. Good night. Good night.